The story of a dying cab driver who takes an ambitious drive from Broken Hill to the NT. Last Cab to Darwin stars Michael Caton and Jackie Weaver. Let's take a look. We didn't get it all, Rex. I'm sorry. How long? Three months. At best. There you go, then. You're looking for a volunteer, aren't you? Not that simple. Where do I find you when I get to Darwin? You're driving? Are you really going to do this? I've never been more sure of anything in my life. I miss you, Rex. OK, dog. <laughs> Shit, shower and shovel. What are you going Darwin for? None of your business. Gentlemen, what you want? Well, I want to play football. And he wants to kill himself. He does. It's a bit of a plot spoiler, but he does. And um, actor and director. I think we always should mention actor because Jeremy Sims is a really fine actor, but now a director. Joins us now from Canberra. Jeremy, good morning. Really good to talk to you. Hi, Virginia. How are you? I'm very well. What's with it with you and, and the last, the end, the last train to Frio, the last cab to Darwin? Just, you, you've got an obsession with the end point of life, mate. It's, uh, I blame Reg Cribb, the, the guy <laughs> yes, I write with. Um, they're, they're the kind of titles he likes. Uh, well, th they work, those are those titles. They get your attention. Hey, you've got a beautiful cast here, Michael Caton and mm. Jackie Weaver. The other thing that really struck me most of all, seeing, and I admit I've not seen all of the film yet, but the bits that I have, that face of his, the face of Michael Caton out in the Australian desert with that extraordinary golden red light on it is a thing of wonder. Yeah, we, we had a feeling, I'm in my head when I imagined Michael playing the role, um, they were the two things going together that I thought would work. and. Uh, you know, we, we did the whole drive. We did 3,000 kilometres from Broken Hill to Darwin with a with a crazy small crew and, and Michael drove the whole way and did was he? on all day, every day. And um, it's an extraordinary performance by him and, and really watching him do it, I was, I was amazed all day long at well, his ability. We're just seeing bits of it here now and I think people will get that sense of this sort of Easter Island statue that his face has turned into over well, the it's years. Well, it's a real... It's almost like a flip side to the Daryl Kerrigan character yeah. from The Castle. I yeah. mean, Daryl Kerrigan's a, an extrovert and, and uh, Rex is an introvert and we get to know him slowly through the film and it's a great chance for Michael to show his dramatic chops because, you know, he's incredible. You traverse so much terrain of Australia, as you say, in this film, but you also traverse a great deal of psychological and I guess also social terrain. You, yep. you, you talk about the Australia of today and you don't shy away from the issue of racism either. No, um, you know, Reg Cribb and I have, have been interested forever, really, with all the plays that we've done together and, and also the films we've done together with, with trying to, to discuss Australian identity, you know, mm. who, who we are, um, how we operate, the, how we see ourselves and maybe how we act, and they're not always the same thing. Um, you know, I think very few people would think that Australia, as, as we've discovered in the last week or so, is a racist place. Um, and yet, for instance, on the road between Broken Hill uh, and Darwin, there are, you know, there are 12, you know, th 12 or 13 towns that are divided distinctly between race. There are black towns and there are white towns even today. So I uh, just staying on that for a moment, watching the Adam Goods furor unfold as it has <coughs> over the last few weeks. What have your feelings been, Jeremy? Oh, look, I think the thing that's been most annoying to me is this sort of furphy that the reason they're booing is he's not a good bloke. I mean, everybody that knows Adam, that's worked with him, that's played with him, that's seen him do anything, knows he's a, he's a good bloke. What, what happened to Adam, as far as I can understand, is he discovered in his early 20s um, his heritage and where he comes from. And, you know, the fact is, if you're Aboriginal, then between five and seven generations ago, you lost your law and your culture completely. And, and we in white Australia need to have a better understanding of the psychological damage that that does through generations. And, and, and he's just beginning to understand it and asking questions and we shouldn't be angry at him for doing that. You know, I, I, think, it's, um, I think it's been a really good wake-up call for all of us. Look, your, your, your scripts, your, your films really are always concerned with, uh, with I guess, the broader questions and, and as I say, the, the complex psychological terrain of our lives. And that clearly attracts some you know, top-flight actors. Jackie Weaver, who I know everyone's saying she's sort of enjoying a resurgence, but from my point of view, she never really went away. But she's a, she's a, a wonderful uh, cast member to have on board as well. Yeah, and she's very loyal to this project. She was involved in, this, in the stage play sort of version of this story mm. um, 15 years ago, no, 12 years ago now. Um, 
well before Animal Kingdom and all that stuff. So she was over in America and she read the script and she, you know, she said, oh, my darling, it's, it's the best version of the story that I've read and, and I really want to be involved. So she was. I mean, it wasn't easy getting her out here for two weeks in between <laughs> seven other projects, but um, she's a very loyal person, Jackie, and, and uh, we couldn't have got it up without her and we're really grateful. I, I know it's taken a long time for you to get this film project up, I think about seven years. How, how do you feel now looking back on the work that you've done? Oh, it's just so exciting at the moment. I mean, it's very easy to make a film in Australia and have it just disappear. Yeah. And um, this film's going out on 220 screens, which is daunting and terrifying <laughs> for me, because uh, it starts on Thursday and we're all going to be looking at the numbers. But yes. a lot of people have watched the film and said, you know what, I think this plays broad. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's very purposefully on my part entertaining. You know, it's, it's funny and it's moving and it has big issues in it, but at the same time you can have a giggle as well. Um, and everyone just watched and said, you know, we think, we think we're going to put this everywhere. So Icon, who are distributing it, are doing a brilliant job. And um, we're really going to give it a red hot go because all the audiences we've played it to are loving it. Oh, good on you. And um, who knew you could have a giggle at euthanasia? Sorry. <laughs> it's possible. Plot spoiler there. Um, just very quickly, we're Jeremy. We're Australians. <laughs> <laughs> um, any chance you'll be back on the stage or the screen as an actor sometime soon too? Oh, look, I hope so. I just did a little turn in Brendan Cowell's Reuben Guthrie. Yes. Um, where I played the boss, and that was and that was great fun. I just I was only on it for a couple of days of work. Um, I'm, I miss it terribly, and I miss the theatre terribly. But um, now that this is done and out there in the world, I think in the new year I'll I'll start to have a look at doing some acting again. Look, I, I'd love to see you back on the, the stage and the screen as well. Nice to talk to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Virginia. Good luck. And that movie opens on Thursday. Last cab to Darwin.